I mean, Bert, please, you're a guest in my house, and I, I'd like you to be comfortable. I am not a guest in your house. Well, I understand there are a lot of uh, new buildings that have gone up in the past ten years. Mrs. Stoddard. Does this still seem like a small town to you? I suppose it does, because you've traveled all over the world, haven't you? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Um, is this a, a making conversation? Is that what the name of this game is? Well, this is no game, Bert. I'm really interested. After all, I've known you since you were a young boy. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, Winters. You know Burke Devlin, don't you? Yes, I... Hello, Burke. Vicky. Why don't you stay and entertain Burke while I get the tea? I'll only be a moment. Uh, that's all right. Burke, what are you doing here? I'm not exactly sure. I think I'm having tea. <laughs> The last time I saw you, you weren't exactly planning a social tea at Collinwood. No, I wasn't. What is it? Why did you come here? You concerned for me or them? At the Evans house, you said some pretty dreadful things about Roger Collins. True things, Vicky. Is that why you came here? To accuse him of being involved in Bill Malloy's death? Vicky, you were asked to entertain me, not question me. It's none of my business anyway. It should be. Do you remember how many times I've told you to leave here? Go home to New York? There's no sense in you getting involved in this. What are you going to do? Reach the end of a road. Erase my debts. Settle my accounts. I waited ten years for this, Vicky. But Mrs. Stoddard, doesn't she know? She knows. I almost wish. Tell me, Vicky, how is David? Fine. Nice kid. I like him. Well, then why don't you think about him? After all, Roger Collins is his, is his father. Vicky, don't. Don't let yourself become involved. You can change nothing and you might get hurt. And that wasn't part of my plan. It also wasn't part of my plan to bust up your dinner party the other evening at Maggie Evans. That's not important now. Perhaps not. But there are times when I do wish these pressures weren't here. That we could sit and have a nice, quiet dinner. Talk. Simply talk. About Collinwood? Certainly not. There are other things in this world besides this big, dark house. There are people and places and excitement. I have nothing to do with Widow's Hill. Then why can't you settle for that? I wish I could. God help me, I wish I could. Well, there's no other way to do it. After I'd run out on Burke at the house, I knew I had to settle it. I knew I had to go back to the hotel and talk to him. About me? Oh, about me. <laughs> Don't worry. I, uh denied any knowledge of the, whether he was uh, guilty or innocent of the manslaughter charge. Then why did you go at all? Because I knew why he'd come to my house. He's determined to find the man who killed Malloy. I had to convince him that I was innocent. And did you? I think so, yes. Now you're next on his list. I see. Collins, I didn't kill the man. I don't even know that he was murdered. Don't you? Tell me, why do you get such a special delight in letting me know, as you put it, that I'm next on Burke's list? I was just informing you. Nothing more. Remember, Evans, whatever happens to me happens to you. Your punishment may be lighter, but you're older than I am. The sum total may precisely be the same. You had more reason to kill Malloy than I did. I'm not talking about him, Evans. I'm talking about ten years ago. You found it amusing to remind me that Malloy's death was a blessing to me. Well, I'm not denying that it was. But that blessing can become ashes. 
if but questions continue to be asked. Don't you think I've thought enough about that? Well, then don't enjoy the anticipation too much of Burke coming to see me. Because if he does learn anything from any source, you can be sure that you will be involved as well as I. Well, uh, Collins, wait. Listen, I've uh, been thinking. Now, some time ago, you said you wanted to help me out. You wanted me to leave town. You said you'd give me some money. Yes. Well, uh, I didn't take it then because I, well, I think you're right. Yeah, there's going to be questions, and I maybe it'd be better if I wasn't around. I'm sorry, I've withdrawn the offer. Well, I wouldn't need uh, much, Collins, just enough to get me and Maggie into another town. Well, why this sudden change of heart? At the time I made the offer, you were quite indignant. You refused to run. Well, it's it's a uh, it's like you said. Uh, there'll be questions about Burke's manslaughter trial, or are you concerned with Malloy's death? I told you I had nothing to do with that. Yes, I know. And you told me you convinced Burke. Well, maybe you did. But I'm not entirely sure that you've convinced me. Yes, Maggie. Yeah. I'm all right. I told you I'm fine. Oh. Well, I'm sorry if I worried you. Yes, darling, yes, I'm coming home right away. I'm coming straight back. Bye-bye. Yeah. Hey, Oh, but you left. I've uh, been thinking about your request. Perhaps I was a bit hasty in refusing to give you money. Well, you changed your mind, huh? Yes, I think it might be wise if you did leave town. Wiser for me or for you? Well, for both of us, of course, as you said. Well, I've been thinking, too. And, uh, it was a foolish moment of panic. Now, come on, Evans. You can't change your mind every few minutes. <laughs> Seems we're guilty of the same vice, huh? But I told you I've thought it over. I'm sure you did. I'm uh, sure you realized how interesting it would seem, both to Burke and the police, if I hurriedly left town during the investigation of uh, Bill Malloy's murder. That had nothing to do with it. Well, uh, I know a uh, statement you yourself said you didn't believe a few moments ago, but it's, it's changed now, hasn't it? You suddenly realized how Marvelous it would be for you if the police thought I was running out on a murder charge. Yes, I want to thank you for uh, bringing it to my attention. Evans, I'm offering you several thousand dollars. Keep it. When Burke comes to you, you may need it. One of the most fascinating places to me, Vicky, was Norway. Those men are sailors. It reminded me of my dad. He would have loved it there. Did, did he love the sea that much? Crazy about it. But he never got much chance at it. He was, well, not too healthy. So we had to settle for being a landlubber. You must still have a lot of the sailor in you, don't you? I don't know. I don't know what I am. When I was old enough to think of what I wanted to be, I, when I grew up, nothing. When I was little, I wanted to be a bareback rider in the circus. All beautiful, dressed in spangles, and riding the most magnificent big white horse you ever saw. Did you ever try? I was in that foundling home. How could I? You could have run away. I'm not the running away type. I wish you were. I mean, from here. I wish you'd pack your bags and run away as far as you can. To what? The circus and a big white horse? Maybe. Maybe even to Norway. Anywhere but this... this dungeon, Vicky. You don't belong with ghosts. You belong with the world. With laughter, with smiles. And everything the world can give you. And you? Where do you belong? In the dungeon. Here. I'm sorry it had been so long. Oh, here, let me help you with that. Oh, thank you, Burke. Have you two been having an interesting conversation? Yes, he's been telling me about some of the places he's visited. None of them have ever seemed as much like home as Collinwood. Well, not quite like it used to be in the past, but I'm delighted you still enjoy being here. Mrs. Stoddard, couldn't we drop all this nonsense about having tea? And... Excuse me a minute. Miss Winters, will you serve the tea?
What are you doing here? Having tea. Did you invite him here? Hardly, but once he was here, I thought it would be better to give the appearance of hospitality. Why? <clears throat> he was waiting to see you. I thought it would be as well as if he, if he were in a good humor. Well, it's a shame that I wasn't here to make the tea personally. I don't think I would have risked drinking it. Would you like me to leave? Of course not. It seems that uh, Burke is going to make everything public. By all means, stay, Miss Winters. There may be one or two little things that you've missed in your eternal prying. I have not pried, and you know it. You are apparently perfectly willing to discuss our private affairs with anyone. Even the waitress in the hotel cafe. Why pick on her? Roger, why don't you pick on someone your own size? I have nothing to say to you, Devlin. I'm sick and tired of these insinuations. I would like the matter settled. I see. Well, in that case, I would like talking to Burke alone. Seems to me you've had more than enough time to talk to him alone. I will talk to him alone, or not at all. Very well. Perhaps someday... We can have a meal, lunch or dinner, without interruption. Just what do you want? I want your hide, Roger. Miss Winters, you were alone with Bert. Did he act as though he were in control of himself? Why, yes. I wonder if it was all right to leave them alone like that. Oh, I'm sure it is. Mr. Devlin seemed... Well, all he did was to talk about some of his travels. That's all? He did say that he'd come here tonight to settle the things that had brought him back to Collinsport. Then he's still mainly concerned with clearing his name. That accident he told you about. I suppose so. How can he be so insensitive? Why can't he show a little more concern for the fact that Bill Malloy just died? Well, he's very much concerned. He told me so. Well, then why doesn't he show it? Why doesn't he drop his own personal vendetta for a while? Because he believes that the two are somehow connected. He thinks that... I know what he thinks. He repeated the conversation he had with you at Miss Evans' house. Well, at least he, he admitted that he wasn't quite sure what happened during the accident. Well, then why doesn't he leave Roger alone? Because he thinks that... I'm tired of what he thinks. I'm sorry, Mrs. Starvin. Don't be. It, it's not your fault. I think I'll go get some of that tea that I missed a while ago. Would you like me to get it for you? No, thank you. Perhaps I'll get something straightened out in there tonight. I hope so. Don't you know that I could sue you for slander? It happens to be against the law to make statements such as you've made about me unless you're fully prepared to prove them. Well, then, why don't you sue me, Roger? I would like nothing better. That case was settled in court ten years ago. The jury said that you were guilty. But I said I wasn't. You haven't got a leg to stand on. You have no new evidence to introduce. If I brought up a charge of... slander, they would bring up the whole thing again. The whole past. They would have to give you a trial, and the court has already denied that. Exactly. What would it prove? If you had new evidence? Uh, but I don't, now that Bill Malloy is dead. Well, I don't know anything about that. You don't know anything about Bill Malloy's evidence or about Bill Malloy's death? Neither one. He certainly would have said something about it to me, and he didn't. And he didn't say anything about it to Sam Evans? I, how should I know? I suppose you would rather I... Uh... I dropped this theory that Evans had told Bill something that would exonerate me. You're beating a dead horse. It's over and done with. Yes, I guess you're right, Roger. You must imagine that since I've already served my five years, come out of it with my health, made a lot of money since then, I really have no cause for complaint, right? Well, it could have been worse for you, you know. It's such a long time ago, and it's finished. I served five years, one month, three days, and seven hours. And every minute of that time, I thought about what it would be like when I got back here. I thought you were going to drop that. I am. If you'll answer one question honestly. I have answered every question honestly. Have you? Well, never mind. I said I would drop that. Besides, there's something a good deal more important to consider. 
Oh? What's that? Did you kill Bill Malloy? Did I? Are you serious? I've never been more serious in my life. Did you kill Bill Malloy? Do you expect a serious answer? You might as well tell me, Roger. You can deny it later. I intend to find out anyway. I'm just as anxious as you are to find out how he happened to slip in the water and drown. Oh, and that's what happened, you know. Don't make it any worse than it is. A man who's been around boats all his life just slipped and fell in the water. There is no evidence to the contrary. Evidence! I'd rather rely on my instincts. Why should I kill Malloy? He was a friend of mine. I had no reason to want him dead. You didn't? Bill Malloy set up that meeting to force Sam Evans to state that I was not driving that car the night the man was killed. Burp, you make me sick. How long are you going to hang on to that ridiculous story? And if I wasn't driving the car, Roger, you were. You should have served that sentence, not me. I must say, Burke, I've been completely wrong about you. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I said that you served five years in prison and that it hadn't done you any harm. Now I see that it has. It's driven you insane. I still have sense enough to say that you... you were the only one who had a motive to kill Bill Malloy. But if what you say is true about motive, then Sam Evans has just as much motive as I have. I talked to Sam Evans. He had nothing to do with Bill Malloy's death. You're judge and jury, aren't you? Yes. You better believe I am. I'm worried about what's going on down in the drawing room. Well, I haven't heard any screams yet. I guess that's not very funny. No. Did I interrupt you? Oh, no, I was just writing a letter. You write a great many letters, don't you? It's nice that you have so many friends. Well, most of the letters I write, they're not exactly to friends. Acquaintances from the founding home? Very few of them. You see, when a child is placed in a foster home, Usually, the new parents like to forget about the past. I suppose that's for the best. It is, really. This letter I'm writing, well, it's to myself. You're writing a letter to yourself? I know it sounds strange. It's a habit I got into when I was a child. It's the only way I had of getting any mail. How sad. You can't imagine what a thrill it was to get a letter. Why, I'd put a stamp on it and put it in the mailbox, and then I'd have the double thrill of knowing that the mailman was coming and bringing a special letter for me. No one else ever wrote you? No. I kept hoping. We all kept hoping as soon as we were old enough to know why we were there. One day, we'd get a letter. A special letter from our real parents. Didn't most of the children know that their parents were <laughs> no longer living? Of course. But you can always hope. Yes. You can always hope. You must have written a great many letters to yourself. It's like some people keep a diary. That's what it amounts to. My own personal diary written to myself. Still, you must have a pretty complete record of everything that's happened to you. It doesn't take as many letters as you might think. But your whole life. No. Not, not very much ever happened to me until I came to Collinwood. Mm -hmm. 